many times a night you light that fist up? Danny is always a character that's on constant evolution and growth. You know, we're telling this kind of like long form coming of age story across all of this series. Um, so really Danny in the second season, he, um, he has this now renewed purpose. The last thing that Matt said to him in Defenders was protect my city. And so he's on the streets every night. He's being a vigilante. Uh, the fist is now more powerful. It's coming to him more easily. And he's really just out there every night trying to, trying to do what he can to uh, keep up with Matt's word. Um, but what that means is he's running himself pretty dry, like he's not looking after his health, he's not looking after his relationship with his girlfriend, Colleen, either. And so, really, the, the, the theme through this season is duality and balance. So Danny's, Danny, through this season, has to try and seek to find some balance. I wanted to make sure when I was coming into season two that I was 110% like, ready for it, both uh, mentally but also physically. So there was a lot of training I did leading up to the second season. And then I also did yoga and I did meditation. I meditated every day, yeah. And I still continue to meditate. So about uh, five months before we started shooting, I got into like a five day uh, training regime over the five months. So it would be, I'd train with my personal trainer, uh, Bev, who's a, Bev Ratcliffe, incredible personal trainer. She, uh, she studies in martial arts as well. And we did a lot of like, gym, uh, we took a gymnastic approach to, uh, to, to personal training. So I did that. Uh, I, I did some traditional Kung Fu and Tai Chi with a really great Shifu called Shifu Ming on the Lower East Side. He's an ex Shaolin monk. Totally cool dude, really taught me a lot about the, the, the art form and also like the more the, more the spiritual side to, about, around it. Uh, I work with someone on a more modern form of martial arts, uh, more Jeet Kune Do, which was more about kind of getting a brawler aesthetic, more kind of a street style kind of like uh, readiness. And then Clayton came on board, that was another tool. And Clayton was, not only does he have this great skill set, but his attitude is one of a coach. He feels like a coach. Not, not only does he want to make sure that the fight scenes look authentic and feel cool, but he wants to make sure that the actors are supported and are safe and are thriving. And, and that's, what, that's what Clayton really, he set up this space to do that with the team that he brought on board. From Luke Cage going onwards, I was very vocal about how I wanted Danny Rand to be portrayed. Um, and I would sit down with, with Raven, our showrunner, who's incredible and every every episode would sit down and I'd share my notes with with the scripts and and just try and make Danny feel a little bit more um, relatable and real you know I, I wanted more of me to come through in Danny because I think that's kind of what is more interesting. Raven brought this great level of like optimism and, and passion to the show like he just wanted to evolve everything he wanted to evolve the characters he wanted to evolve the fighting um, he's a he's a huge comic book nerd a huge Iron Fist fan and he just really wanted to tell a true Iron Fist story and he wanted to be as authentic to the fan base and the show as he could possibly be. Um, and he was a collaborator, like he collaborated with everyone. He would collaborate with the actors, he would collaborate with the, the, you know, the costume department, the props department, the, the location department, like he really wanted everyone to have a creative voice in this season. And it really felt like an ensemble, not just from the cast, but really from everyone involved. You feel that you can just walk through this world as if it belongs to you. Danny can see Davos's point of view. Like he gets it, like he totally gets it. And, he, he, and, and for, for, for Danny, he wants, he wants nothing more than for Davos to come back into himself. He wants to save Davos. Like he sees that Davos has kind of gone off and like he understands why Davos is doing what he's doing, but then he also, like, it's also like, well, you've, you've been brainwashed, you know? Like, you, you've got to understand that the world that you've lived in isn't isn't the real world, and like, come on, man, like, I, 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 I we were friends as we were kids, like, we're, we're brothers, please, just like, come back, come back, come back to yourself, you know? And that's a really nice thing to have as a, as a character's motivation, because it's not like, oh, I want to kill Davos, oh, I want to destroy the baddie, it's like, no, I see the good in you and I want you to be good with me. I want, I want to bring you back to the light. It's not so easy as like, oh, he's the goodie and he's the baddie, like that's the mirror. It may seem like that in the trailer, but I think deep down, it's, it's a lot more nuanced than that. You know, they're brothers, you know, and, 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 and they care about each other and they've been through a lot together. And it's not so much of like they're mirror, they're not, they're not, they're not mirrors. They're actually very different people, but the, and that's, that's what makes them so interesting because they are different people that share this kind of like a much deeper connection. And there's, there's, the, there's a resentment there and, and Danny has messed up. 
you know, but also Davos is, be, is, is, is totally being irrational. You know, so I think it's 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 a lot it's a lot deeper than just like this whole comic book trope of like the mirror image. You know, I, th I think Raven really went out of his way, and we went out of our way to make it more than more than that. You know. <laughs>